should be on. Okay. So what if, what if um, sort of talking a little bit about what if you've got an ill mother who is negative? Uh, well, I think, um, you know, my mother, uh, I lived with my mother, she died recently, and I was, um, uh, the thing I wanted to do with my mother was to 100% transcend my mother. So that would mean to let go 100% of all my all the all my ego attached meaning and projections outcomes and expectations I had of her and uh, I was studying uh, Course in Miracles teachers of enlightenment like Dr. Hawkins and Muji and so so what that what does it mean to 100% uh, let go of your mother for me or to transcend your mother it means that you can retain um, uh, when, we, when I talk about Muji and self-inquiry and the observer, being in the observer, one is, retains a capacity to stay in the witnesser or to, to experience a sense of limitless presence within your mother. So that would mean that the ego, when, the, when your mother is in front of you, it means there's no historical ego identification or attachment from past historical stuff. So if you look at we look at the Course in Miracles, it's it's not, one of the first things it says is all my thoughts are meaningless. Also, it says you know like the table is equally as meaningless as the as the light, which is equally as meaningless as uh, uh, that person sitting over there. So what we're doing is quite obvious: is we're stripping, we're stripping all the ego identification because the ego, as it says in the Course in Miracles, we we only see the past. When we look at something, we're just seeing our past projections of what the ego had, uh, has projected onto it in our past history. So in order to strip all of that away, uh, you know, for, for example, the idea that you, know, you want to strip away all your, all your past associations of what, what a mother should be, how a mother should behave, um, wanted to strip away as well. I think if you've got a, a mother that's prone to negativity, like there, there's voice tone, uh, there's the language of words that's used, um, there's the stripping away that, uh, of any outcomes or expectations that um, this person should behave in a certain way or be different to the, to the way they are. It's everything that, everything that triggered me with my mother was something to work on until the, those triggers had zero effect. So in order to transcend it, you know, you want to have it so that there's no effect. Also, because there, there's so much baggage there, um, you, um, you want to do things like sitting with the feelings. Um, I also applied quite a lot of different things to her. I applied, 12, um, I applied uh, sitting with my feelings and feeling them out. Every time I had an interaction with my mother and I was triggered, I'd go and sit with my feelings. Uh, I would practice trying to, to remain in the observer uh, while being with my mother, and if I got if there, if there was a trigger and there was um, a pulling out of the observer just to go back into the observer. Also something from 12 steps is, you know, to not, to f not let your mother hook you in. Because my mother would like try and hook me in with political stuff on the news, which would be a, a great thing because it was almost like she's trying to hook you in to some kind of debate or drama where you'd get some kind of conflict. So to have no opinions you know, like not to have opinions on, on various topics. And then let her have a thing and then, uh, and then maybe switch the topic. Or if it was really bad, then I'd just, you know, have to leave the room. But again, not try and leave the room with getting into an argument. And so through practicing all of those things, also there was an intention for unconditional love with my mother, how that expressed itself and I thought it was very, very, very interesting. It was like, I, would, I knew she liked me making cups of tea for her. So that was my thing, was like, to have the intention, like if she said anything that triggered me to just make her a cup of tea. And, uh, and sometimes she'd say something that would trigger me and then I'd have to go, I'd have to process feelings and do some work or go to the observer and then come back and make her a cup of tea. So I could tell over the, it took five years basically to transcend my mother. 
and they and could make the cup of tea faster and faster and found that less and less, less and less things were triggering me because I'd, I'd, I'd actually transcend. You know, like if you could, say, you know, and what I found, when I initially did the work, I thought she would remain the same, but there would be nothing she could do or say that would, that's what I thought, doing it, you know. She was still carrying on talking about politics and still telling me about my failures, but none of it would have an effect. That was my goal. But what I found is as I did the work, she also changed, which was, which was something that I hadn't anticipated. But I didn't do the work to change her. I did the work so that there was nothing that would hook me in with her. She could say what she likes. Uh, she could do what she likes. Um, she, she could have a rant. Um, or have any political opinions, and I would not be affected. I could st still remain in that neutral, detached, witnessing space and let her be that, but be almost like in a place of infinite power so that that would have no effect. And it's like from A Course in Miracles, you know, it, it's kind of obvious, you know, like if you have a random, if you have like a random person say, I think you're not good enough on the street, it doesn't have an effect, you know. Mm. Some, some homeless person says, I think you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. You just ignore them and you walk past. But it's like your mother says you're not good enough. And then it's like, it's like there's all this stuff that comes up. You know, why? Mm. There's just like a few vocal sounds and it's, an, it's a human being so making a few vocal tonalities. Mm. And yet one person, you ignore it mm. and has no effect. And yet another person, you, see, you have like a huge emotional disconnecting reaction. So from the Course in Miracles, it's the same thing, you know, even noise. Why should certain types of noise and vocal articulations have more effect than anything, you know? It shouldn't really. So it's all equally, it shouldn't have any power to disconnect you from the source, just some vocal noises. So again, you know, to take out the strict meaning of certain things, they don't have any power. So, you, you know, the, as the cause would say, we're not a victim of some kind of vocal, yep. Can I ask, so, um, so I can see that in terms of the tone of voice with the being, you know, yeah, the yep. critical abuse, etc. What about when they're suffering and that, that's so painful to... That's a good question. To so, them. thank you for asking that. So, hence, you know, I want to come back to a, f a few different things, but... Um, Actually, I was doing the Course in Miracles regularly, and what would happen is I would do cancelling beliefs and God did not create stuff on myself to, to, cure, to cure my own illnesses and my own baggage. And I was, I was doing it on her on a certain level, but then I realised one day, and I've shared this on, uh, on camera a few times before, it came into my mind, like, why don't you say God did not create for your mother? So one day she came in and she was upset because she went to the GP, she had heart failure, and her legs were swelling up with oedema, and she went to the doctor, <clears throat> and the doctor said, there's nothing we can do, you've got heart failure, your legs are swelling up, you know, there, there isn't anything we can do for you, and that, that's it, really. And so she came back, and usually they give you a pill saying, look, here's something that might help, but they didn't do anything. So she was kind of distraught, and then it popped into my head, I think that was the Holy Spirit, it said, like, do, do it on behalf of your mother, like God, God did not create oedema in your mother. So I knew that was like a holy uh, thingy, uh, a sort of a, 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 an inspired thought. So I started doing God did not create oedema in my mother, and immediately the swelling started to go down as soon as I started to do it. And within about, I think it was two or three days, it had completely gone. And, and she said to me, as soon as I started to do it, she said, look, it's almost like she intuited that I was doing something. She said, oh, look, my, the swelling is going down. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized that you, don't, you, you can not only do it on yourself, you can do God did not create things Lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles for others as well. It's not that, that it's guaranteed, but I realised the great power, because we're all one, so everyone's got their own karmic stuff, but sometimes, you know, miracles can happen. And I think, here's the thing, which, I, which I, uh, the way I sort of see it, like, you know, if you look at The Course in Miracles, and, you know, I've cleared three illnesses, I had that miraculous thing with my mother, so it could be helpful to my mother's, uh, and also if you look at the work of Dr, you know, the work of Dr Hugh Len, who cleared a whole prison out just by forgiving them, clearing his data and his perceptions. So it's like, everyone knows about Dr Hugh Len and cleared out a whole prison just by clearing out the data of his perceptions of what was wrong with them, and then they all got well and left. So that's the great power, but also from Dr Hawkins' work, 
You see, it's the ego that gets, you see, your level of consciousness is a direct correlation to how much miracles happen around you. And the thing with family is that because family have so much baggage with their relatives, is they don't usually have a very high level of consciousness because they want to save and rescue and they don't want the family to suffer. Like if you had a saint there who's not hooking in to all that family stuff, they would actually have a higher level of consciousness and there would be more likelihood of a miracle happening with your family. So, so I knew that I had to let my baggage go for the opportunity for miracles to happen. So the way I sort of saw it is if, if my mother is suffering and my ego is getting caught up in feeling bad for her and wanting to rescue her, that means my level of consciousness will be lower, which means there's less of an opportunity for miracles to happen. So I have to transcend my ego perceptions of her suffering and want to rescue her. And how does one do that? Well, you know, uh, completely being willing to let go of, of her as my mother. You see, like, there's a, such a thing as called special love, and there's divine love, which is um, impersonal love. So divine love is impersonal love, or being in the, of course, most would call it the holy instant, or we could call it the eternal now. So in the holy instant, the ego is not identified uh, with the limited self. And so it's not having a special relationship with another individual, especially family is going to be an extremely special relationship. So when I'm identified with my thoughts and body, I, I experience myself as an individual, as a limited self. And then my perception stemming forth from the limited self, especially with a family member, is going to be an extremely special relationship. So all that baggage, all that past stuff, so that means the level of consciousness, my being a transmitter of light, or the absence of my ego being a transmitter of light and being a, a function for miracles to happen, will be a, a direct correlation to the absence of the limited self or the ego self or the identified self. Having a, having a special relationship or a personal relationship with mother. Because remember, my mother, this is the way I saw it. I mean, I took the Course of Miracles literally. My, my mother has the same symbolic meaning as a table. I wanted to strip out, you know, like, God is equally in this table as it is in my mother, which is equally in the lamp. So I didn't want, when I, I didn't want my ego to be identifying that my mother is any more special than a table, or any more special than a plant. Why? You know, her vocal tonalities, her, her facial expression, you know, if I saw a stranger on the street make a grimace, that should be as equally as meaningless as my mother making a grimace. So there's sort of Course in Miracles lessons where you look around the room and say everything is equally as meaningless as anything else. Uh, or that vocal tone is equally as meaningless as that. So I'm willing to strip the, uh, my symbolic representations and projections and outcomes of what my mother should be. I didn't want any outcomes or expectations. She didn't need to behave in any kind of special way towards me. She didn't have to be nice. She didn't have to do anything. I wanted to still retain being in that state of, in the, the, you know, being in the observer and not having anything getting hooked into this being anything special. My mother being anything special compared to a plant or compared to a tree. Why? Because for me that would be, to let go of the specialness would be the act of greatest love for my mother. To let go of attached love or individual love, or special love, or projected love, or baggaged love, because I know that would be blocking me off from miracles, God's work being done by being a, a channel, by being in the infinite space, it's more likely that uh, great miracles will come to pass. But if I'm like letting my ego get hooked in, oh poor mother, she's suffering, how can I rescue her, then my vibration drops. And if my vibration drops, I'm not, you know, all I'm going to be is like a, like a sad, miserable son feeling sorry for his mother. So no miracles will happen. So we study, of course, miracles. So for the miracles to happen, the special relationship has to be dropped. Um, and, you know, so we know, like, uh, in India, they, they talk about the cities. You know, when you get to a high enough dis dissolution of the ego, you know, you know, the, the amount of light that, that comes through 
from these people who are pure channels. Like miracles happen all around them. That was the thing with Mother Teresa. You know, like someone came in with cancer and then the cancer disappeared just in the presence of a saint. So that kind of thing can't happen if one is having all that baggage with, with a family member. Um, so, so just to, just to tra tra you, know, be, you know, for me it's be willing to transcend, let, let everything go. Don't ex have any outcomes or expectations. Practice the observer.